The RTX 4060 family was announced and Nvidia provided data. And I did my pixel counting best to determine the frame rate shown. What can we expect with real FPS performance without frame interpolation clouding the data? Did Nvidia lie in the presentation? And how will AMD's RX 7600 stack up in terms of performance and how will it be priced? Let's get into it. Nvidia surprised many of us by announcing the RTX 4060 family of GPUs on May 18th. And they gave us all the details of what we can expect for performance and pricing. For the performance comparisons, the first red flag in the presentation was the heavy use of DLSS 3.0 or frame generation in the FPS charts. Characterizing frame generation as FPS really clouds the data. At best it's misleading, at worst it's deceptive. More than half of the games are showing frame generation FPS values. Frame generation is a technology not to be measured in FPS. It is not a performance improvement in the way we have come to know FPS and input delay. It is a frame smoothing technique and should not be measured in FPS. It's not that I don't like frame generation. I do like the technology. It's the start of something much like DLSS 1.0 was the start of something. What I don't like is Nvidia's misleading marketing of frame generation for improving your FPS. It does not improve input delay, which is what higher FPS implies and why gamers desire higher frame rates in the first place. The second red flag was the use of gray bars for the previous generations and the bright color for the new generation. I've talked about the psychology of colors and this technique in the past, so I won't rehash it here, link above and below. The third red flag was all about the teraflop comparisons. A 38% increase in teraflops will not provide a 38% improvement in FPS. How do we know this? The 3060 Ti at 16 teraflops is 229% higher in performance than the 2060 Super. However, from tech power up, we know the 3060 Ti is only providing a 32% increase in gaming performance. People who quote these numbers don't understand them and are just part of the Nvidia hype machine. Let's ignore the frame generation comparisons as Nvidia did provide 7 games without frame generation. Nvidia has provided accurate data for this generation as I have shown in my previous analysis videos of the 4090, 4080 and what ultimately became known as the 4070 Ti. So let's break down what they provided. I did my pixel counting best once again to put numbers on the frame rate shown and let's start with the 4060 Ti. Once I determined the frame rates, I created this chart of the 7 games. The 2060 is in blue, the 3060 Ti is in yellow, and the 4060 Ti is in green. If we focus on a comparison with the 3060 Ti, the first thing that pops out is the 4060 Ti is not that much faster than the 3060 Ti. And in fact, when you calculate the average, the 4060 Ti is only 13% faster than the 3060 Ti. This is Nvidia's own data. This is after two and a half years of development. This is very disappointing. Next, if we reset our view and just look at the comparison to the 2060 Super, you can see a much more substantial jump in performance and the average gain in these seven games is 59%. The 2060 Super came out in July of 2019, so almost four years later, you finally get a significant gain. And looking at the information Nvidia supplied and removing frame generation, Nvidia shows the 4060 Ti is 15% faster than the 3060 Ti, while I calculated 13%. Close enough. And Nvidia shows the 4060 Ti is 60% faster than 2060 Super, and I calculated 59%. So what other GPU is 13% faster than the 3060 Ti and 60% faster than a 2060 Super? Going over to Tech Power Up, we see the 3070 is 17% faster than the 3060 Ti. And the 3070 is 55% faster than the 2060 Super. So it's easy to conclude the 4060 Ti will be like a 3070 in performance. Now let's move over to the 4060 data that Nvidia provided. Again, a majority of it focused on frame generation. Ignoring those results and pixel counting on the seven games, I created this chart with the actual frame rates. I kept the same color scheme for each generation, just a darker shade. The 2060 is in blue, the 3060 is in yellow, and the 4060 is in green. 
Focusing on the 4060 compared to the 3060, the performance is only a little better, and after calculating the average of these seven games, the 4060 is only 18% faster than the 3060. Again, after more than two years, a very disappointing upgrade. Refocusing on the 4060 versus the 2060 comparison, and you can see the 4060 is faster, but not that much faster. Calculating the average of these seven games, and the 4060 is 46% faster than the 2060. Looking over the information that NVIDIA supplied and removing frame generation, NVIDIA shows the 4060 is 20% faster than the 3060, while I calculated 18. I would say that's close enough. Comparing the 4060 to the 2060, and NVIDIA shows it is 60% faster, while I calculated 46% faster. The 60% claim seems overinflated. How did they get a 60% increase? Using their own data, the seven game average is only 46%. This 60% claim seems dubious. We'll get back to this. Let's look at what GPU is 18 to 20% faster than a 3060. And looking over at Tech Power Up, the closest GPU is a 2080, but not quite a 2080 Super, and definitely not as good as a 3060 Ti. Now let's get back to NVIDIA's dubious claim that the 4060 is 60% faster than a 2060. Looking at Tech Power Up, you know what is just over 60% faster than a 2060? A 2080 Ti. There is no way the 24 SMs in the 4060 will be like a 2080 Ti. So let's take a look at what is 46% faster than a 2060. And looking at Tech Power Up, that is a 2080 Super. So expect the 4060 to be in between a 2080 and 2080 Super, but fall short of the 3060 Ti. Again, NVIDIA's claim of the 4060 being 60% faster than the 2060 is false. Finally, I thought it would be fun to combine all the FPS values into one chart. Again, the 20 series is in blue, the 30 series is in yellow, and the 40 series is in green. The darker shades are for the base models, while the lighter shades are for the Super and TI variants. This chart, built with NVIDIA data, shows how the 4060 falls short of the 3060 Ti in most games, and it is only 1% faster in Metro Exodus. For me, this chart really highlights why the 3060 Ti was such a good GPU last generation, and how the current generation provides a very weak upgrade. And if you live in the NVIDIA bubble and have a 20 series GPU or older, then maybe this 40 series GPU is something you would consider. But what about AMD's RDNA 3 based RX 7600 that will also launch one day after the 4060 Ti? While the launch of RDNA 3 was a big disappointment six months ago, we now have the next launch in the RX 7600. The first red flag is why did AMD not include the XT? Why is this GPU not the 7600 XT? Why is it just the 7600? The leaks show that it is using the full Navi 33 die with all 32 compute units active. The 6600 only had 28 compute units active and they nerfed the memory. The 7600 has the same number of compute units as the 6600 XT. So again, why is it not called the 7600 XT? The only reason would be the performance improvement will not compare well with the 6600 XT, and they want reviewers to compare it to the nerfed 6600 non-XT. So what performance levels can we expect? There was a leak back in April that suggests it is like a 6700 XT, and I won't drag you through all the math since this video is long enough, but I agree with that performance level. So how will AMD price the 7600 XT? Some rumors suggest $299, while others will go up to $349. To understand where they will price this GPU, you have to ask yourself the question, why did NVIDIA announce the 4060 and provide its performance and price before the launch of AMD 7600? The 4060 does not launch until July. Why did NVIDIA give up its competitive advantage and announce price and performance two months prior to the launch of the 4060? Could it be because NVIDIA controls the pricing structure of the GPU market? And they know AMD is about to launch the RX 7600. They don't want AMD to mess up that pricing structure due to a panic in the down market or maybe a miscalculation. To prevent that, King Jensen just publishes the price and performance levels two months in advance 
and now Queen Lisa can calmly slot in the RX 7600 to Nvidia's pricing structure. I've talked about this many times before and you can check out these videos on how AMD uses a slot in pricing strategy, links above and below. Since the RX 7600 will be slightly better than the 4060, but not as good as a 4060 Ti, and now that Nvidia has published all the information AMD needs to know, I expect AMD to keep the same 329 pricing they introduced with the RX 6600. But even if they are aggressive and price it at 299, the performance differential with the 4060 will not be significant enough to matter to most people. Just think about if Nvidia did not publish the 4060 performance and price two months before launch. AMD could have panicked in today's down market. They might have priced the 7600 at 279 like they did with the 5600 XT or even 249, which is about what the 32 compute units on the same node RX 6600 XT is priced at today. Isn't it great how Jensen just imposes that calming influence for Lisa and they can rule the GPU kingdom together without any real competition to benefit the gamer? The sad truth about the 4060 Ti, the 4060, and the 7600 is that they only provide a 20% or less performance upgrade from the last generation. Nvidia is selling these GPUs not on price, but features. And the main feature is frame generation and the misleading FPS performance benefits. Don't be fooled. It is a smoothing technology, not an FPS enhancing technology. In summary, the 4060 Ti will be like a 3070, the 7600 will be like a 6700 XT, and the 4060 will fall short of the 3060 Ti to be more like a 2080. If you already purchased an RTX 30 series or an RX 6000 GPU, this generation is a skip it generation. If you want those levels of performance and are willing to buy used, there are still really good deals for way less than $300. One thing is clear, 60 series GPUs, the real volume getters, are now firmly planted in the $300 price range. If you like the analysis and insight these types of videos provide, hit that like button, share it, and consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments below if you have an older GPU and will be upgrading to one of these GPUs. Based on this poll at WCCF Tech, not many are interested. For me, I am only interested to see what ITX size GPUs come out this generation and how much those will cost. Check out my other videos here. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.